Anime and manga are filled up with all sorts of things, spanning from universe destroying battles to just characters having a seat and talking to each other for a whole episode. With the many episodes or chapters that are set up for us to go through when experiencing these different series, there are always some things that prevail the most for me. These things are able to fit perfectly in with whatever the story is trying to show off to the viewers. Whatever genre or demographic, these things are in there and if they're done correctly, they're able to impact upon the audience in a very good way. These things that are in many stories are called lessons and well, they could be used in real life that could be important life lessons. If an anime or manga could successfully pull off displaying all sorts of life lessons to the viewers, then well, they'll have a much better connection to the story and give it a way bigger rating as well. Letting a fictional story give you life lessons is by any means alright and actually really cool. A story is able to portray something that you'll be able to use in real life in a good way as well. For me there are many stories that include these specific type of lessons, but I've picked up a few of my favourites for this video and also put down in the comments your own lessons you've learned when viewing this medium. Now, one of my first examples that I absolutely love and fits well and constructed into the stories and characters is We Don't Need the Memories from Haikyuu. Now, Haikyuu has a lot of life lessons woven into the story and those ones are just as good. The main lesson and theme that bases off the story is not letting other people or circumstances undermine your dreams and drive to succeed and that is a very good one but an obvious choice. We Don't Need the Memories is also from an antagonistic group from Haiku, and the way it connects well to both their team and the characters amazes me. It's their team motto and is able to drive them to become better when playing in their respective sports. The motto even helped one of our main characters in the game as well. Basically this lesson is a counteract to pondering on both your past failures and successes. When pondering on the past both positively and negatively, it can affect your now, the present. It's trying to say it doesn't matter where you were yesterday. The national champions all losers. The only thing that matters is what you choose to do and be today. So don't get wrapped up in your past failures or take too much pride in your past success that could make you neglect to work as hard as you can in the now moment. This could inevitably help you improve your focus in your present game or whatever you're working hard at. It doesn't even need to be a sport. Just don't ponder on your past experiences at that one moment or it can make you either cocky or depressed. Try and experience new things to the fullest at your own command, and by continuing to do so, you'll be able to improve your focus. It's a lesson that has stuck with me ever since I had seen the Inarizaki match in Haiku, and my respect goes to this story for influencing me. Next lesson that comes into mind is one that comes from one of my favourite stories ever told. It's a visual novel though, but I'll just include it as an anime or manga, I don't care. Hollow Ataraxia is a story that brings so many things to the audience and it kind of reminds me of Gintama's structure. It's a story that includes of fresh and entertaining slices of life stories as well as having a serious side to it. I'm not going to spoil of course, I'm just going to cover the amazing lesson that it sheds light to. The lesson of accepting your weak and frail human self while still moving on due to the bonds of people around you. I love how this is incorporated with the main characters Bazet and Engramanyu who share some really tough and interesting backstories that influence their actions in the current story. By being both dependent and independent, they're able to improve their own selves in a very inspirational way. It's basically a story that gives lessons on loving yourself, about just being fine with facing the future and that it's fine to be afraid about life. It's also about moving on, even if you have your burdens. Take up your responsibilities for it, and then let it heal with the connections you'll eventually make. How the main characters are able to combat against their internal problems together is what really got me right into the story, and the ending scene is just peak. My favourite ending in this medium. I highly recommend Hollow Ataraxia, so I'll be making a video on why you should check it out in the near future. The next life lesson I really love is one that resides within Vagabond, the lesson of accepting fate and accepting that your lives could be predetermined so you're insanely free. Takuan from the Vagabond manga explains this lesson in a way that even if it sounds like a contradiction, it's not how things truly are. He explains if there is some higher purpose in life, then you just have to let it be, accept it for what it is. And when doing so, doors would open revealing true freedom, showing that you and everyone around you could be infinite. Your individual paths are preordained by the heavens and for that very reason is why you're free. I think Takuan was trying to say that every path we take is infinite and free even if there is fate. If I decide to just get up and go jump some random kids, that's a part of my free will. Basically whatever happens, happens. You're free of worry and you come to realize how to let yourself be well 
you. Don't hold yourself to impossible standards or keep thinking about what you could have done or where you could have been, and then you'll truly be free. Free of worry or stress. I think it's a good way to calm yourself down whenever you run into any internal problems, so you could just leave it up to a higher being. Basically religion in a sense, but the way Takuan explained it, it was pretty much what stuck with me the most. Now onto the next lesson that really helps is made by none other than the best teacher in anime and manga, Yoshida Shoyo. One of Shoyo's quotes really stuck onto me, and it really made me admire both him and the entire series of Gintama much more. Quote, People are born weak. Everyone struggles through life, burdened with an identity they cannot accept. However, that doesn't mean we can only suffer as our weakness controls us. We can also struggle to face our weaknesses, defy them and change ourselves. People have more freedom than what you think. End quote. Shoyo is able to convey a lesson on struggling against your weak self and improve it. Don't stay weak and don't let weakness pull you down. You're given an option in life to improve that bad side of yourself you don't accept, so struggle against it. This definitely, in a way, helps me to remember to improve myself and not stay static or let weakness take over my body. Gintama has a lot of great quotes on improving yourself and when going over them again, it just makes me appreciate the series much more. It's a gem and Shoyo really just doesn't teach people in the series, but as well as the audience. The last life lesson I'm going to bring up is made by none other than my favourite anime and manga character, Joe Yabuki. Not gonna lie, but this section will contain big spoilers from Ashida no Joe, so if you care about that, then skip to the outro or well, click off the video. Leave a like though, of course. Now, Joe's entire journey is a really inspirational one that is known by the entire fandom. Every single Ashida no Joe fan I've spoken to all hold Joe up to high regards because of the influence they have had on them. He's inspiring and his story shows this. As a boxer, Joe had his own spark in the ring. It's a spark that lets his fire burn bright, dazzling towards the audience. And after all that, there would be pure white ash, showing that he used his fire wholeheartedly and there wouldn't be any remaining embers in his heart but satisfactory white ashes. The lesson that is shown in this story is one telling you to do and complete anything that fills your heart with fire. Let it burn bright, bright enough to blind your surroundings, show your potential, skill and anything that will let you achieve higher heights. Don't leave any lazy embers, let your passion burn when fulfilling your goals and then and there you will achieve true satisfaction. Don't live life halfway and more importantly don't ever neglect your talents and skills that you have. Let yourself ablaze in anything you feel passion for. That's what I've learned from Joe Yabuki and I hope you take something from this as well. I hope you take something from any of these lessons to be honest, but I hope you enjoyed the video nevertheless. If you did, make sure to comment down below some more video ideas for the future. Loved making this video and it was really fun talking about the different lessons I've been intrigued in the most. Of course, comment down below some of your own lessons you've learned from anime and manga as well. Now like always, subscribe if you haven't, hit the like button, turn on bell notifications, and follow my Twitter down below. It's been Endless Requiem, peace.